the early days no doubt had faced one setback after another. The shocking suicide of founding member John Spence, a poor selling debut album, and a record industry obsessed with grunge. By 1994, it seemed like their second album, Tragic Kingdom, might never come out at all. Things only got worse when frontwoman Gwen and bassist Tony ended their romance. We didn't know what we were going to do, because how can you be in a band and how can you have a breakup like that? But we were so passionate about this record and everything that we just made it work. I think writing the songs and being able to have that whole weirdness kind of eased the pain. The new songs became an outlet for Gwen's heartbreak, and they were pretty heavy. I remember when I wrote Happy Now, and I was like so proud of it, you know, I was like, God, it's exactly what I'm feeling, and I just called him up, and like, I finished Happy Now, you know, I'm like, let me read it to you, let me read it to you, let me read it to you, he's like, okay, you know. Those are some seriously intense words, but they were so sincere that uh, I wouldn't stop her from writing what she felt. Just as Gwen was coming into her own as a songwriter, her brother Eric decided he'd had enough of major label politics and quit the band. I think Eric just hated the idea of having someone else that he didn't know, kind of a stranger, come in and tell him, why don't you try it this way or try it that way? Eric just didn't see any reason for that. I really think that I'm losing None of us thought that record was going to come out. I didn't think anyone was going to hear those songs that I wrote about Tony, you know. There was talk about stopping the band. I mean, I remember Tony telling me, I think we should discontinue. We just figured we're going to put this out, it's going to fail commercially like the first one did, and then we're going to finish college and go on with our lives. Just a girl came on the radio in the hotel room in Salt Lake City, and then we started jumping up and down and hugging, and it was a good victory. It was like, yay! It's a really surreal experience when they're announcing your song and talking about the band. It's hard to really describe in words how great that feels. The little ska band from Anaheim suddenly were radio darlings, regaining the attention of their label, Interscope. It was a really exciting time. When the record's about to come out. We're out doing what we love to do, which is play live shows. And you get little glimpses of like how big things were actually getting. It was getting big so fast, the whole thing. We just we couldn't stop. We had to just keep pushing through. We could see the light at the end of the tunnel. This record was going to come out now. filmed the Just a Girl video with a real budget, so we just thought this is going to be great. We got to come up with the whole concept ourselves, and I wanted to do something that just showed the band and where we came from. The house that we're at in the video, that's where we wrote all the songs for Tragic Kingdom, so it shows us packing all our gear up to go up to play this gig, and then they load into this girl's bathroom. I just like the idea of showing the difference between the boys' bathroom and the girls' bathroom and the dynamic of the boys trying to get into the girls' bathroom. After shooting the video, No Doubt hit the road, this time in style. We were in vans for eight or nine years, and we always dreamed of being able to get on a tour bus. The bus pulled up at the band house, you know, all of our parents were there. We got on the bus and we were just so happy and so excited. It changed the whole touring experience completely. It made it so much easier. I still get giddy about getting on a tour bus. First we were out with 311 for a while, and that was really fun. And then we got offered to go on tour with Bush. It was the first big touring experience that we had. Looking back on it now, it really, really did help jumpstart our record. 
It was really fun to have a single. You know, you go out there and you play three or four songs and you have this arena of people going, where's Bush, you know? And as soon as we'd pull out just a girl, it was like suddenly everyone's like, oh, we know this song. And then we'd win them over. <laughs> My whole life changed, you know, during that time period by meeting my boyfriend, Gavin. You know, I know kids and the other boys and Tony for so long, and it was just crazy. And suddenly I had this new thing in my life, and everything was centered around being totally in love. Hey, what's up? As Gwen and Gavin's love grew, so did the No Doubt Nation. By August of 1996, Tragic Kingdom had gone double platinum. And a month later, the band was invited to perform for their biggest audience ever at the MTV Video Music Awards. They didn't let us play inside at the MTV Awards, but uh, we got to play on the rooftop over New York. Any vertigo attacks there while you're up there? Adrian. I'm having one right now. I mean, I'm, I'm not in the hype at all. This sucks. You look completely confident throughout. You had no problems at all. Do you weren't afraid you're going to pitch onto the bus or something like that? Um, no, but when I talk about it right now, actually, my hands are getting really sweaty, so I better <laughs> stop thinking about it. One, she's beautiful. Number two, she's female. And she's going to get a lot of attention to the detriment of the other band members. We got the call. Ben wants to do a cover story. You know, we were all really excited. Another milestone for us. But then the word came back, well, they don't want you guys on the cover. They just want Gwen. That could be frustrating, and it was a lot on me. And um, I felt like the problem in the band. I guess you could say there was some jealousy. It just seemed like, this is the way we are. Why can't we just be represented that way? It just felt like a slap in the face to us that you guys aren't good enough to uh, represent your band on the cover of this magazine. Next. Band Turmoil makes for a good music video. If it seems like we're acting really well, it's probably because we're not even acting. And Gwen deals with her sudden fame. I remember just telling myself, even though everything's weird, you're going to be fine. You're totally tough. Plus, the band takes a pause as America comes under attack. It just made our project feel so unimportant. Coming up on No Doubt, The Complete History.